Asari coming up in the bulletin. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, Heaven Black Mosquito Coil and Spray, Calipo and Nido Fortigro, your love, their future. And coming up, Parliament approves 180 million CDs allocated to the Office of the Special Prosecutor in the 2019 budget. Also ahead this evening, gold dealership firm Men's Gold petitions parliaments to intervene in resolving their impasse with the Securities and Exchange Commission. On mission tonight, teachers at Bandaruman Catholic Basic School in the Krachi in Chumuru district of the Volta region join campaign to create OT region. And later in the bulletin, we'll tell you the inspiring story of a nurse turned photographer. And elsewhere on the foreign front, flights at Gatwick suspended again due to a new suspected drone sighting. And later in sports this evening, Kotoka faces, Kotoka faces Kari Banji Sharks of Kenya in crucial Cap Confederation Cap first qualifying round return leg in Kumasi. Stay with us here on News 360 for the details of these and much more news. As always, you could watch our bulletin all across the world on 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Thanks very much for joining us here on News 360. In our very first story, the ranking member of Parliament's Finance Committee, Kessel Atuforsen, is calling for the confiscation of the properties of embattled gold dealership firm, Men's Gold Ghana Limited. He explained government has a responsibility to intervene. Men's Gold has petitioned Parliament over its inability to pay clients. The company wants the lawmakers to serve as arbiters between them and the Securities and Exchange Commission, who asked them to shut down their gold vault market, which was not licensed. In the petition sent to the Finance Committee of the House, Men's Gold asked for a comprehensive payment plan to pay off completely all customers who wish to discontinue their trading of gold collectibles. Speaking to the media on the development, Ranking Member of Parliament's Finance Committee, Kissel Atuforsen, said government is not justified in its decision not to intervene. Government attitude of I don't care is not good enough because government should intervene into ensuring that at least at the minimum the assets of the owners of men's goods are confiscated very much so, if possible, sell them and then defray the debt with it. He also called for the prosecution of the owners of men's gold. Government cannot assume that the guy can commit a crime like this and go away. It's only the government that has the power of a state to be able to use the police, to be able to use the military, to be able to contact Interpol to ensure that the asset of this crime, crime the person who committed this crime, is, is brought to book and then used it. Anything more than that, I have a concern. But that's Now, Parliament has approved 180 million CDs allocated to the Office of the Special Prosecutor in the 2019 budget. This amount is expected to resource the office to fight corruption. Parliament passed a law in November 2017 to establish the Office of Special Prosecutor as a specialized agency to investigate specific cases of corruption involving public officers and individuals in the private sector. The Special Prosecutor's Office, which is established under the Office of the Special Prosecutor Act 2017, Act 959, is considered a priority by government in its quest to fight corruption. Contributing to the motion subsequent to the approval of the budget for the Office of the Special Prosecutor, Chairman of the Committee on Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Ben Abdallah Banda said, the Office of the Special Prosecutor will require enhanced funding from 2019 and beyond. In considering the annual budget estimates, the committee was mindful of the special needs of the new Office of the Special Prosecutor and the urgent need to support the office to become fully operational in the year 2019. Mr. Speaker, the committee also endorses the decision of the Office of the Special Prosecutor to build a world-class anti-corruption institution with a new culture, a new staff, with high moral standards as the surest way to win the fight against the menace of corruption. MP for South Dai also pointed out that it is the duty of the Special Prosecutor to fight corruption and not promote it. 
we are empowering the office to employ all requisite skills and abilities to fight the canker of corruption in this country. MP for Tamale Central Al Haji Inu Safuseni also cautioned against clash of personalities between the special prosecutor and the attorney general's office. Now we have the legislation, and it is mere legislation. The speaker, it appears from the committee's interaction with the special prosecutor that the special prosecutor has difficulty, great difficulty, in setting up his office. And I believe that the Ministry of Justice will facilitate, assist, help the special prosecutor to set up the office. The sum of 40 billion cities was also approved for government machinery. In other news, political party representatives, youth groups and community organizers and activists are calling on government to cancel the public holidays amendment bill that has been laid before parliament. Ghanaians may soon have two new holidays if the amendment to the Public Holiday Act is passed. In September 2018, President Nana Kufuadu made the proposal for the celebration of August 4 as Founders Day and 21st September as a day set aside to honor the memory of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. January 7 has been proposed to be a constitution day by the Akufuado administration with a new bill to amend the Public Holidays Act 2001, Act 601. Ghana will have 12 statutory holidays and two commemorative holidays if the amendments are passed. Africa Union Day on May 25 and Republic Day on July 1 will be the two commemorative holidays. The birthday of Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkrumah, on September 21 was initially Founders Day, sparking debate over whether other contributors to Ghana's independence were being sidelined. General Secretary of the Convention People's Party, James Kwabnabomfe, said the bill is unsustainable and illogical to the sovereignty of Ghana. On March 6, 1957, Ghana did not attain full independence. And our parliament must know this. From 1957, March 6, to July 1, 1960, all the bills that were passed by parliament only came into being as laws under the hand of the representative of the Crown of England, who was serving as the Governor General. Chairman for People's National Convention, PNC, Bernard Mona, explained the move by government was unnecessary. If you choose 4th August 1947 to be the day on which our nation was founded, then you are misleading our society. Because obviously, on 4th August 1947, Kwame Nkrumah was not part of the people who sat to form the United Gold Coast Convention. But it should also be clear to us that the United Gold Coast Convention could not and did not achieve independence for us. The editor-in-chief of the weekly Insight newspaper, Christy Pratt Jr., insisted the country was built on the vision of integrity, urging government to desist from amending the Holidays Act. They have the majority in parliament. They may succeed in passing this bill. Is that where the struggle begins and ends? This struggle does not begin and end in the Supreme Court of Parliament. This is a people's struggle and the verdict will be decided on the streets of Ghana and Africa, not in the Supreme Court, not in Parliament. Let's turn to some other news this evening. As workers of Fabri Metal, the steel manufacturing company at Tripoli in the Ningo Pram Pram district, have staged a demonstration against its management over what they describe as poor working conditions. Now, the peaceful demonstration only turned bloody after some clashes with management. Some of the workers got wounded in a fight. The workers had complained for several months with no response. The workers say the protests will continue unabated if their issues are not addressed.
To some other news, our already made clothing have always been a feature of Christmas. Every kid looks forward to having one during Christmas. In the run up to the Yuletide, we find out how the sales of already made clothing or kids' clothing is faring. Christmas is here again, and almost everyone is suspecting new clothes, shoes, and other accessories. Children are not an exception. For them, it is time to show off their Christmas clothing, also known as already-made clothes. A visit to the Central Business District saw lots of shops which deal in these kids' clothing restocked with new designs. Patronage, obviously, was good for these dealers. I've reduced them, so they are buying it. At least if they want to buy two, they buy one old one, one new one. So it's a bit slow compared to last year. Our mother travel and bring in new goods and we are hoping for them to come in. Mothers busily went through the designs to choose beautiful ones for their children. Roughly this year, the clothes are nicer than last year. So for the best design. Mm, the prices is almost the same as last year if you want to compare it. I'm here to buy a ready-made hair. No, no, I, want, I want this and this one. Oh, actually, they are okay. So that's the I want to. So I think you are okay. This man had traveled all the way from Takwa to Accra to choose an already made cloth for his four children. I want you to become so very beautiful and handsome boys and girls. That's why I'm here. Because so far as I enter here, I see so many dresses over here that I've gotten whatever I want for my days in my case. Though there are arguments that African prints are taking over kids' clothing, already made will always have its place. Already made clothing over the years have become a prominent feature of Christmas celebrations. Every child looks forward to their parents buying one for them when it's Christmas. Here at the Central Business District, lots of shops have been stocked with beautiful designs and beautiful patterns. I have gotten my hairband, which is matching with this beautiful dress. You can also make your way here to the Central Business District and pick one for your child. For TV3 Business, Grace Hamwasari. Accra. Well, on a pretty inspiring story this evening, he completed the Ola Nursing and Midwifery Training School in 2016. But for close to two years, he must wait at home for posting to practice his trade. It was during this period that he discovered his passion for photography and graphic designing. Adra Adobiawusu brings you the inspiring story of 23-year-old Gideon Awutre. That is the daily life of 23-year-old introvert Gideon Awachidazi. Gideon, a trade nurse, had higher hopes of working in one of the health institutions in the country in contributing his quota to helping address challenges in the health sector. After waiting for almost two years for his posting, he tried his hands on his newly found passion, photography. He says boredom led him to his brother's photography shop. Very, very interesting. I was not having any um, you know, motivation for photography. I just found that you know, I'm very good in photography. You know. the, the, the profession found me. He developed interest in computers and could eventually design anything his mind could imagine. Gideon Awachi took us through his typical day as a photographer. We have so many types of photo shoots. It could be um, a creative shot where you know we create, we bring up props, we create you know a scene, and then we shoot. It can be a baby shoot uh, for the children. That one I'm very good at when it comes to children you know, because of my lesson side. Then then you know sometimes I take passport pictures for people. As much as Gideon loves to practice as a nurse, which has always been his childhood dream, he has no intention of quitting photography because of the fulfillment he finds now. I'm more than satisfied. I'm really, really satisfied. I'm that type of a connected person. But because of photography, you know, right, right now I have friends. And economically too, you know, I can, you know, provide for myself and then, you know, maybe my friends, my family, you know, I can at least give them something. His advice to the youth is for them not to undermine any profession and not take little chances for granted. Talk, talk.
now get into our mission segment this evening here on News 360. It's brought to you by Star Ghana with support from UK Aid, Danida and the European Union. Now teachers at the Banda Roman Catholic Basic School in the Krache in Chimuru district of the Volta region have joined the campaign to create awareness about the creation of the OT region. The move is to Ghana for more yes votes ahead of the December 27 referendum. Banda, one of the 125 indigenous settlements constituting the Krache in Chumuru district, is semi populated and can only pride itself of electricity. Banda is poorly developed, just like the other parts of the Nchumuru district, and so the news about the creation of the OT region has been embraced by all. Needing OT region is very serious to us because looking at uh, projects. Oh, we are back for a long time uh, and we know having a region of what things, things that you, you may get all attract us to maybe have OT region. But awareness level on the creation of the proposed OT region at the time of the mission team's visit is slow in this part of the district while campaign ahead of the referendum to canvas for more yes votes has not reached many, especially those in the rural areas. As a result, some teachers have decided to take up the responsibility to support the awareness creation process. The Roman Catholic Junior High School is one of the educational facilities that are championing the course. Here, eight of the students are eligible to be part of the referendum, but more students were sensitized so they will impact the eligible but uneducated voters in their communities. When you get to the place on 27 to vote, I will see yes and no. And we are all going to vote for yes. So when we get to the place on 27th, when we get to the voting place, we are going to vote for yes. Head teacher of the school, Ali Kingsley Barnabas, has been at the forefront of the campaign. I would like to use this opportunity to encourage you that when you get home, you should also advise your parents, speak with them, explain to them some of the importance of why they need for the creation of what? The OT region. On 27, when they get to the voting place, they should look for a symbol that looks like what? A catapult, so that they will vote. This has been his reason for championing the campaign for the creation of the region. I will strongly say that uh, the region should be created so that other facilities will also be given unto us. Because when you go to the southern part, maybe there are a lot of training colleges, a lot of universities. But when you come down to these areas, this, all these things are lacking. We only appeal that when it comes to the creation of the uh, region, we should put uh, uh, politics aside and face facts. Some students are committed to spreading the campaign messages. I'll tell those who are in my community that when they went there, they should look out for the, the three letters. Which ones like start like catapult? That's the yes. So when they vote for yes, because when the OT region is created, we shall, we can also get benefits from the OT region, like to give us infrastructure. And Inhabitants are ready to support the cause. There are some villages which maybe to take a car to that place is very difficult. It's not easy at all. So here normally motorbikes are what we use, and then move to village to village. And then I think we can get them to tell, him, tell them what is we are about to do. For a referendum on a region creation to hold, Chapter 2, Article 5, Clause 6 of the 1992 Constitution requires that 50% of the registered voters must turn up to vote of which 80% of the ballot cast must be in favour of the issue. We'll certainly bring you more on the OT region referendum in our subsequent bulletins. And that does it for our mission segment this evening. It's brought to you by Star Ghana with support from UK Aid, Danida and the European Union.
Thanks very much, Natalie, for our mission session tonight. You're still watching News 360 live from our news hub here at Adesawe in Accra. You can join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories tonight. Share with us your views and comments on any of our social media pages. Now, on our MTN video report today, our citizen journalist, Udin Isaac Abraham, reports on the uncompleted school structures in the St. Joseph's Technical School at Saboba in the northern region. This structure we are seeing right now has been left like this for so many years. This structure was put up to serve as a boys' dormitory for St. Joseph Technical School in the Saboba district. But it has since been left like this. The question is, will this structure serve the purpose it was meant for? Looking at the boss, the boss are broken. The question is, will this boss be replaced? When will this structure be worked upon at least to ease the congestion in the schools? My name is Odin Hazik Abraham, citizen journalist reporting from Sabuba. Hello there and a warm welcome to the business news on News 360. My name is Park Kwesi Asari. Now with barely a few days to Christmas, dealers in livestock in Kumasi say sales within the season have been slow and low. Other ancillary businesses of the livestock market are also affected by the poor patronage of animals. A report by Benjamin Edu. Livestock trade at the Bombay and Ifiakobi markets in Kumase has been low few days to Christmas. Some sheds are virtually empty of animals. Few patrons are spotted negotiating for their sheep and goats. Yet prices of livestock have shot up. Sheep is sold between 300 and 1,500 cities, above the previous price of 250 to 900 cities. Good sales between 250 and 500 cities, up from 150 to 350 cities. Some dealers at the Bombay livestock market attribute to the increase in prices partly to police extortion on the roads. They lament the poor sales in the season. This year, business has been quite slow. Prices of goods have also shot up. Since morning, I have sold only four. Other young people who earn their income from slaughtering activities have also been adversely impacted. Mohammed Elias charges between 30 and 40 cities per animal prepared for customers. He is hoping business gets better in coming days. Well, actually, the business is nice, but this time the business is not going the way we are expecting. But still, we still have more days to go. So, as for now, we are still looking forward for more work to come. Yeah, animals, actually, it comes, but not as those years ago. Starting like it is very slow, but by the end, you, it will surprise you. And you see that it has gone for beyond your expectation. In other news, Vodafone Ghana has donated, donated a check of 2,000 CDs and a cash amount of 200 with other assorted products to the Teshi Children's Home. The donation is part of the company's 10 years anniversary celebration. Vodafone Ghana is an operating company of Vodafone Group, one of the world's leading mobile telecommunications company with a significant presence in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Asia Pacific, and the United States. As part of the company's profound sense of responsibility and commitment to social development in Ghana and in relation to its 10 years anniversary celebration, management of Vodafone Ghana donated some items to the Teshi Children's Home. The items included some toiletries, food items, clothes and a check of 2,000 Ghana cities. The founder of the Teshi Children's Home, Janet Parker, and one of the longest voluntary staff, William Niama, received the items. We are very grateful to Vodafone 
and we thank them immensely for what they've done. And the children are very pleased. As you can see, they are all very happy, eating and playing and dancing and making merry of the event. And we hope they will continue assisting us. Management of the home and the children were very excited to have received this donation. <laughs> You're watching the business segment on News 360 with me, Parque Siasari. The contractor working on the Thermal Port Expansion Project, Meridian Port Services, has taken delivery of six rubber ties and gantry canes at the key site of the port anchorage. While Ghana is the first country in the sub region to install the biggest ship to shore gantry and rubber tie cranes for port operations. Management of GPHA. Managers and the contractor pitched camp at the key site to wait in earnest for the biggest operational facility in the region. The gantry cranes are tipped as the modern equipment to help in the turnaround movement of cargo at the new port facility when completed. We are delivering um, the most sophisticated cranes on this planet here on the first pier, first berth of the Tamaport expansion project. It took about a month for the equipment to arrive. The second batch, which is made up of eight gantry cranes and 12 rubber tires, is also due to come by February 4, 2019. The STS crane stands tall, equivalent to 32-story buildings, when boomed up. The cranes will create new jobs and more hands will be hired to enhance skills of employees. Well, that's all for the very latest in the world of business. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Park Yasari. For more business news stories, do log on to our website, www.3news.com. Over to you, Natalie. Thank you, Pa, for the business news. Now, on to some other stories. The Civil and Local Government Staff Association, Ghana, CLOGSAG, has given government three months to release data on second-tier pension contributors or risk their anger. Its Executive Secretary, Isaac Bampo Ajo, said the delays by government has affected benefits to be calculated for those who will be retiring from 2019. He gave the warning as part of his Christmas message to government in Accra. The Secretary was worried that SNIT and MPRE had failed to release data on those who have so far contributed to the second tier pension scheme. The lack of data, the Executive Secretary Zebampo said, has affected calculations of benefits for those who would retire from next year. He has given government three months to release the data or risk their anger. The assurance given to us that by December 2018, the matter will be resolved could not materialize. We are hopeful that the issue will be resolved before the first quarter of 2019. Of a major concern to clock sack was the wrongful calculation of past credits for contributors. The association want to serve notice to SNIT to comply with the agreed position on payment of past credits as its patience is running out. Clock will no longer tolerate the low rates applied in the payment of the past credits to its members. In another development, the head of civil service, Nane Jakum Jamila, has emphasized on promotion of staff from next year. People have also been promoted and will be able to reduce the backlog considerably. Over 4,500, we are left with about only 500. God willing, we should clear that in the first quarter. Later, members thanked God for his benevolence for the year. On the entertainment front this evening. Winner of 2018, Ghana's Most Beautiful, Abna has departed the GMB Reality House for her hometown, Jumapo, in the eastern region. As part of her homecoming tour, the Queen will make stops in towns in the region and head for Jumapo on Saturday. Now, the 19-year-old described the experience as a life-changing one. La, 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 tidus, mago. Ghana's most beautiful. Hey, 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 the time has come, Ghana, to show the world our culture. Her dream was to get a crown, the bragging right, and of course, that good looking car. This is the plus SUV, and you spoke to me about the fact that you took a photograph with it, and you look good, it fitted you so well, and here you are living that dream. First of all, how does it feel? 
be in this vehicle? Yeah, I'm very happy because my dream became a reality. And I'm just so much grateful to God and people who supported me from day one. Ooh, God has most beautiful. Hey, yeah. The journey has been so wonderful, life-changing, and all oh, is just amazing. I'm so glad I was part of this. And what is it that you have learned? The lessons and everything. Okay, so I've learned to be more.